Hello, Great 10 Mind Setters. Welcome to your Life Sciences show on a Wednesday. I'm Lini, and with me is the awesome Shalom. <laughs> Welcome, Great 10s. We're just having a discussion here. Yeah. Lini's half my age, <laughs> and I think her brain is also as half as forgetful. <laughs> It's oh. quite bad, actually. <laughs> what are we doing for the Great Days? We're going to be doing ecosystems today, the last in for this term, yeah. All right, Mindsetters, I hope you guys are excited for your lesson about ecosystems. Remember to hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Learn Extra. Our Twitter handle is at Learn Extra, and you can get all the show notes, the videos, and the schedules on learn.mindset.co.za. And if you want to win yourself a Casio calculator, all you need to do is enter the Test Yourself competition. The link is on our Facebook page. You click on the link, you fill in all your questions, your answers, and then you submit your entry, and you'll stand a chance to win a Casio calculator. And remember, we have as much time to enter, guys, so don't stress. And now I think, Looney, but uh, no, you have until next week to enter. So remember to enter the Test Yourself competition. And if you want to win yourself Vodacom airtime or a Sony Xperia R, all you need to do is enter our Get Connected competition. And Cheryl is on this week, so we are voting. <laughs> My for Cheryl, this is going to be smashed. <laughs> so it is round three of the competition, guys. The information is on our Facebook page. You need to go to Curio. There is a, a code there. It's learn. You click on that link, and then you enter learn, and then you choose Cheryl. And then you go back to Facebook, you click on the link that has Cheryl's name or it'll take you to a picture of Cheryl. You like that picture, you go back to the competition graphic, you share that graphic with all your friends and then all those people who've shared it will stand a chance to win Vodacom airtime and then all those people who have the teacher with the most likes and we're hoping it's Cheryl because we all have life sciences <laughs> and we all have Cheryl, you'll stand a chance to win a Sony Xperia L. So get connected, go to our Facebook page for all the information about that competition. With that said... I Cheryl. feel like a politician. A vote for Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure what I'll be able to give for you, to you. Welcome, grade teens. We're coming to the end of our ecology <coughs> um, section today. We're almost there. A couple of weeks, and then it's going to be holidays. Hooray, hooray. Don't worry. Us teachers love the holidays as much as you do. Okay, today when we look at the ecosystems, you've gone through all the biomes. You've gone through human activities. Today, I won't say we're looking at the nitty-gritty of, of the ecology section but it is quite a, a large or right, volume of theory that we're going to quick I'm going to I'm not going to run through it but I'm going to give you the basics because we've only got this one um, session to do it in so I want to be able to give you as much um, information as possible if you have a look on the board lots of these words should be um, terms that have come up before abiotic bio biotic components all right energy flow and we're going to do a little bit of ecotourism before I forget, because I always do, right, we're going to look at the challenge question. Right? The challenge question for today is the food chain that is represented by the period of numbers below. Now, already we're starting to have a little bit of terms coming in of the words work that we're going to do this evening. Right? Is it a grass, a cow, man, a tree, an aphid, a ladybird? My favorite, ladybirds. Plankton, fish, fish eagle, grass, buck, and ticks. I don't want to give too much information away. We're now going to carry on with the section. When we're looking at the ecosystems, how I am teaching it this, um, this year, and it's a bit of a trial run for me, is I've, and I'm hoping that the kids like it, because I do find that um, you enjoy the human anatomy part, and when it gets to ecosystems and ecology, you're like, oh, so boring. Okay, is what I've tried to do is, I've, my great teens have watched The Lion King, all right? Now, it's quite frightening how many of them at the age of 16 know all the songs and all the words, all no, right? It's, to it's it. that movie, though. Yes. Like, it's so addictive and it's hey? so sweet. Obviously, you know all the songs, <laughs> you've watched it like, yes. But <laughs> if you watch it now, again, those of you who do have The Lion King, I want you to watch it now, but not from a, woo, Simba wins, hey. <laughs> I want you to watch it from a biology perspective. I've given my grade tens a worksheet and everything, and lots of the terms that we talk about, right, they're now getting to see how the movie actually does show all of these terms in the in the in the movie. So maybe a different way for you to study it, take all the terminology and go through the Lion King and say, Oh look there's a food chain. Oh look there's a biome. Oh look there's a scavenger. All right. All of those kids remember the hyenas, hee hee hee, all those funny little ones. All right. So maybe you can put a little bit of a different spin on it. 
Okay, for starters, first of all, as I said, terminology is important. Let's have a look here at what the terminology is. And from the beginning when I looked at biomes, ecology is the relationship that the living is going to have with the non-living. In other words, the abiotic factors are going to determine what biotic factors are going to be there. Okay, let us start with a diagram and let me show you exactly what I mean. Okay, we're going to start with the abiotic. I don't want to use my finger. I always use a pen and you know I like pink. All right. Now I'm going to, if you have a look at this diagram, let me extend. <coughs> all right. If you have a look at this diagram, what you're going to see is I'm going to look at the different, all right, abiotic factors. Now the abiotic are my non-living and they are, if you have a look here, here's sunlight. Okay. If you have a look, there's wind. All around here, there's water. There is soil. Okay, and what else are we going to find? All right, we got our wind, our water, our soil. What's in here? This is the atmosphere, isn't that? Got our gases, carbon dioxide and oxygen. All right. Now, one thing, most of these terms you are familiar with. Okay, now when I'm talking about an abiotic, remember what I said. These factors are going to determine the living factors. Let's use for example, okay? If for, if for example, let me choose a, an easier one over here. Here's water, okay? Here's lots and lots of water. Have you, can you see there's all water along the banks here? So if I have water, if water is available, all right, let's go back and think about our biomes. It rains constantly in the forest bar, okay? Rain all of the time, water all of the time. So isn't that an abiotic factor? Because I've got so much water, what can grow? Huge big trees, okay? Big trees can grow, all right? They can get very tall. There's so much vegetation. And because there's so much vegetation, there's lots of living things in there. There's birds and there's little bookies and there's little insects. Lots of things happen there, okay? Now let's go to my uh, other biomes. Let's take, you did the namakuru, you did the succulent karoo. What happened? Water is, sh is a shortage there. There's not a lot of rainfall. So when I look at the vegetation, I say, all right, not a lot of rainfall. What do I see? A lot of sand. Plants are really, really small, right? And they have to be adapted to those areas, okay? What else do I see? I see that the, the animals need to adapt. So different kind of life because what is missing? An abiotic factor. Okay, <laughs> another abiotic factor. When you get to sunlight, okay, those of you, we're now going into spring. Now, lots of flowers are going to bloom in spring. Now, while some flowers, okay, they, they flower during the summer, but some flowers, they only flower during the winter. And lots of you think it's got to do with temperature. No, not necessarily. Flowers that flower when it's summer, what happens? You guys should know now. When you wake up in the morning, is it dark, 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 dark? Or do you actually, and me now, when I go to school, all right, I actually can find my way to my car because it, it's nice and sunlight. And also, my kids can play much later because what's happened? It's getting dark much later. So the amount of sunlight, all right, differs in the seasons. Okay, so that also makes a difference. My flowers, my flowers, what different flowers bloom? Why? Got longer periods of light, photoperiodism. What over here, we could, if I say these two words, cooler and warmer, what am I talking about? I'm talking about temperature, all right? I'm talking at temperature. What do some animals do if it's really, really cold? They hibernate. What do, some a bir what do birds do? They migrate, all right? If it's some in the desert, what do some animals do? They're nocturnal, they're at night because it's cooler, all right? Or some animals burrow in the sand where it's hot, estivation. So have a look again, link it to what I've said before. My abiotic, very hot, very cold, 
determines right, what my animal behavior is. I want to go over one concept that I don't think you've done before, and that is physiography. Physiography is a place's position. All right. Now, for example, in South Africa, all right, we have north facing. Here is these slopes over here are north facing slopes. Let me use a different pen. Okay, the blue. Have a look. South Africa, we have our slopes are north facing. Have a look at that. Now these, imagine that would then be south. These slopes over here are south facing. Now I want to show you something. Lots and lots of sunlight. Lots and lots of sunlight. Look what happens. It's warmer and it's drier. What did I say? Warmer temperatures, drier temperatures. Not as much plant life. On my south side, can you see over here, do I get direct sunlight? Not necessarily. So what do I notice? It's cool and moist. All right. So physiography made of three factors that you must remember. Aspect, that is what I've just done now. North facing slopes are warmer than south facing slopes. <coughs> the next one, all right, is slope. I want you to have a look at this slope over here. I'm going to erase quickly. Take it away. Okay. All right. So what do we find? Let me use the green. If you were water and you had to come way all the way down, pouring all the way down, or if you slowly started to trickle down, okay, what would happen over here? All right, erosion. Oh, I can use my finger. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. All right, I wash all the soil away. All right, which leads us to another, let me use my finger, much easier, another abiotic factor, soil. So it washes all my soil away. So if I don't have any soil, do I have lots of plants? No. Look here, rocky soil. All the soil runs out, all the water runs out, and I don't have nice plants. But what happens on this side? Oh, water slowly flows down. And because it slowly flows down, it seeps into the soil. And my soil is nice and rich. Right, it holds water. What do plants need to be able to grow? Water. So I'm going to find lots more plants over here. And with my plants, I'm going to find all my animals. Okay, so when we look at the abiotic, the abiotic, sun, temperature, sunlight, temperature, water, gases, another part of my physiography, all right, is height above sea level. What happens if I'm up here? And if I'm down over here, okay, let me change the color. Heights above sea level. When I go higher, what gets less? Oxygen. When I'm lower, what do I have? More oxygen, all right? So again, adapt. You're not gonna find a whole group of people living on the top of, all right, Kilimanjaro. Okay, because the conditions, not enough oxygen. People, when they climb there, it's a battle, all right? They, 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 there's not enough oxygen. They lose their breath. They, some of them get very sick, right? And they need to come down again. And when we get high up here, right, what starts to happen? Our temperature gets colder, all right? So it's colder, right? And when we're at the top, what is there? Lots more wind. So when we look at our abiotic factors, our abiotic factors influence what biotic factors I'm going to find there. Okay, so if we look at our biotic, which is my living, they should be terms that you are familiar with, right, that you have done maybe in previous grades. Okay, what are my living characteristics? My living are two groups. There's autotrophs. All right, and autotrophs are plants. What does that mean? There we go. Plants, they can make their own food. Automatic, all right, automatic. So plants are the autotrophs and they are living. Okay, 
The rest of my living components are called heterotrophs. Heterotrophs. And that simply means that they cannot make their own food and they need to eat it. All right? They need to be able to get their energy from living things. Now, we divide those into groups. All right? The plants are the producers because what do they produce? Energy, all right, which we call food. And then the rest of the heterotrophs, they eat. And the word for eating is consumers. All right, and we have different types. Those of you who just eat plants, yuck, I'll never be a vegetarian, all right, you are called herbivores. Those of you who like meat, I would be a carnivore. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I often have a saying, if it's green, it's gross. All right, meat, carnivores. Or you can be us, omnivores. All right, we are going to eat both plants and animals. And what happens to all living things? They die, all right? And when they die, their bodies must be broken down and decomposed back into our soil. Shannon, uh, last time you, I said Shannon and now, last time you <laughs> looked at me and said, okay. And you were about to say <laughs> again, <laughs> yes, I was Shannon, and you looked at me and went, uh -huh. mm. okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> My answer to the time for a very quick break, but don't go anywhere, we'll see you straight after this. Welcome back, mindsetters from that break. I wish you guys would be here. I was just about break. to say that <laughs> if you were a fly on the studio <laughs> wall right now, it was <laughs> <laughs> things we talk about. I was just quoting. <laughs> Looney just said, "My brain is dramatic." <laughs> oh no, what? What? My what body. My body is dramatic. <laughs> And we wouldn't oh. understand with any No, we're not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Great Tens. I hope you had just a quick little wee break. As I said to you, I'm going quite quickly through it, all right? But when I picked out abiotic, what, by all the abiotic factors, biotic, right, and how everything comes into play. Now, when we look at living things, living things need food. Obviously, they need to eat, all right? Oh, I've got an itchy nose. You see, it starts. It's here that yeah. it starts. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now we need to eat, and I think you will do it next year in grade 11. Living things need energy, all right? To be able to do things, all living things, we need energy, okay? And in order for us to get that energy, all right, we need to eat, all right? So we eat to live, not live to eat. Now, if we have a look at our ecosystem, all right, there are organisms that are able to use the sun's energy and to trap it in food. All right, and as I said just now, we call those producers our green plants. Then, these bunch over here, all right, we call our heterotrophs, they need to consume. We cannot make it. It would be great if I went into the sun. I wouldn't put on weight. As I said, weight's not exactly, you know. If I went into the sun for a couple of minutes and I went, oh, okay, that's my food for the day. I think we'd all be so nice and skinny. All right. So, but we can't do that. We, we need to eat food. Now, these are consumers. They are going to give us energy. And what this whole abiotic and biotic component says is that energy must flow through an ecosystem. What do I mean by that? I make, all right, let's say I can't, me, the plants make energy. Now, if we've got this tree over here, let's take, for example, the tree. And what happens? Over here, we get a little squirrel. The squirrel comes and it eats the leaves off the tree or it eats the radish, whatever, okay? Now, when it eats it, it obtains, remember, it's eating food. And what is food? Food is energy, all right? Food is energy. You're going to hear, you've heard, you did about glucose when you did your biochemistry. Glucose, fats, carbohydrates, what are they? They are energy and reserved energy. So now what happens is, this little the squirrel eats 
this little radish over here. It gets the energy. Now, what happens is this little squirrel doesn't get the same amount of energy as the plant does because when the plant gets the energy, the plant loses some. Because what do plants do? Cellular respiration. And cellular respiration, all right, is our body losing energy. So this little squirrel can get energy from the plant, but what has happened? Energy gets lost. All right, okay. Now what happens? Here my snake sees my squirrel, and what does my snake do? <coughs> my snake eats the squirrel. Now notice what the arrow is. These arrows show what eats what, but we don't want that. And I'm going to use right, my pink again. What we know is this from there, energy flowed from my producer to my primary consumer. Primary, my first consumer. Okay? Then what happened is my snake ate my squirrel, but what flowed? Energy flowed. But what got lost? All right, heat energy. Because what does my squirrel do? Cellular respiration. And then what do living things do over here? All right, we lose e by feces, all right, which is food that you do not digest that comes out the anus, all right, and urine. We lose it, okay? So that the snake gets even less energy. And then we're going to hear this little liony thing, all right? It then eats the snake. And what happens, all right? At each level, what have we lost? Energy. Energy cannot, it's an energy flow, not a cycle. Because when all of these living things die, what happens? Their nutrients are returned to the soil. A cycle means that the energy would be returned to the sun. No, energy cannot <coughs> go, all right? Once all the organisms have lost energy, that is it. When they die, the nutrients can be replaced into the soil, but no energy goes back to the sun. The sun doesn't need our energy. It has enough of its own. So it's an energy flow, not an energy cycle. Okay, now, another word. Each of these levels... See, my nose is itchy and I need to sneeze and that's not coming. <laughs> so I need to like, I don't know, like, I don't know if I must go like this and hold it. I have no idea. All right. Now, each of these levels, okay, let me use my least favorite color, is called trophic levels. A trophic level is a feeding level. All right. They are producers. That's their trophic level in this pyramid. These are my primary consumers. Secondary means they second on the list. Okay. Now, this setup you might find more familiar when I talk about this. The flow of energy, right, is a food chain. Here is my tree, energy to my grasshopper, to my bird, to my eagle. All right? That is my food chain. Okay, yellow. You see, yellow is a really gross color. Thank you, James. That's why I never use it. All right. The blue better. Okay. Thank you. All right. The food chain. Now, a food chain is a simple showing you of the flow of energy from one trophic level, all right, to the next trophic level. Now, food chains are simple, all right? Food, food, food chains don't actually exist in nature. What does exist is all these interlinking food chains. Have a look over here. Not only does my grasshopper feed off my tree, so does my bird. Here, my rat. My rat is food, all right, for my badger and for my snake. So when we put a whole lot of food chains together, all right, we have got a food web, all right? We have got a food web. And what does it show? It shows the flow of energy, all right? The flow of energy 
Oh, that was a scary E. All right, from one trophic level to the next. Another way in which we show, all right, the relationship that organisms have with each other is by what we call ecological <coughs> pyramids. <coughs> now, if you think very carefully, I asked you a the challenge question, and the challenge question was related to one of these. All right. Now, what is a pyramid of numbers? A pyramid of numbers, quite simply, when we use a pyramid, if you notice, even when we did the trophic levels. Right? Let's have a look here at numbers. I've got 1,000 green plants, 50 snails, 20 blackbirds, one hawk. What have I shown here? That is my food chain, is it not? Yes, it is. Now, when it comes to my food chain, generally speaking, I want to have more food than I do things that eat it. All right. So if I've got a thousand green plants, 50 <coughs> snails, I have more food. All right. I have more plants than I have snails that eat the plants. And as it goes each trophic level, all right, what happens is I generally find the number decreasing. It doesn't always have to be like that. Now think back to the challenge question. Here I'm going to give you a tree, um, aphids, that little hojos. I'm trying to think of one, ladybugs. All right, have a look over there. If I have a look at this one, I have only got one tree. There's my pyramid. But I've got lots of aphids, right? But I've got less ladybugs. Is my pyramid wrong? <coughs> no, all right? No, one tree, one big tree, one, the numbers, it's not out of sync, right? One big tree can support a whole lot of consumers. Okay, so that's my pyramid of numbers. This is my pyramid of biomass. What does biomass mean? Biomass means, I'm going to say here, your dry weight. What do I mean by dry weight? Think about your cell. All right, here's my cell. The majority of my cell is made up of water. Water has no nutritional value. Yes, we need it to be healthy, but water doesn't have any nutritional value. All right. When somebody eats you, they are looking for the food that is stored in these cells. So when we talk about biomass, if I were to take all the water out of the organism and I was just left with this pile of dry dryness, all right, that's actually what you are worth as food. So if we have a look here again, the pyramid, we are going, there's nothing else. You are only going to find the pyramid here. Because producers, all right, always have more, all right, energy. They're always going to have more biomass. And biomass is always, all right, a weight, generally kilograms or grams. But it's a measurable amount, okay? Which means that my primary consumers, they remember what happens from one level, energy is lost. So they're going to have less biomass. So at each level, basically what we're saying is less energy is available. Okay? Because what are you wanting? You want to eat what's in the cells, that's the food. Not necessarily the water. You want the biomass. Okay. The last pyramid, the pyramid of energy, can only, all right, can only go like that if it is a balanced ecosystem. Because what did I say here? Plants always make the most energy. And we measure energy in joules or kilojoules. And what happens at each layer? Energy is lost. So my next layer has to have less energy. What happens? Energy is lost, less energy. Energy is lost, energy is lost, all right? So if you're going to 
eat something. Say, for example, I give you here this human, and I say to you, a bean or a cow. All right, which of those, and when I talk about cow, you know I'm talking about meat. If you were to eat a bean or a cow, which would have the most energy? A bean would. Because why? It is a producer. Okay? The what did the cow do? The cow probably had to eat the grass. All right? So it got less. So my cow would have less energy. Okay? So when we look at our pyramids, again, right, the only one that sometimes that we can manipulate, think about our challenge question, that we can m manipulate is the numbers. Say, for example, a dog. One dog can have 10 fleas. Right, let's go back here. Okay, so I've got one dog, and on that dog, I've got fleas. What would my pyramid look like again? One dog, many fleas. It can be upside down, because one large example can support all right, another. Okay. The last section that we're going to look at is your nutrient cycling. The two most important ones are going to be carbon and nitrogen. Okay, what do we mean by nutrient cycling? Let's go and have a look at our abiotic. Oxygen, carbon, water, and nitrogen. All of those are non-living, okay? All of those need to be made. They then are used and then need to be given off again. So when we're talking about a cycle, remember when we did energy flow? Energy started off with my producers, lost, 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 lost. I never went back to the sun again, okay? The nutrient cycles, we're going to start with something and we need to return it back again. Let's have a look at a simple one, the oxygen, okay? Oxygen cycle. How do I get oxygen? I get oxygen, all right, from carbon dioxide. Photosynthesis, trees taking carbon dioxide and release oxygen, all right? Then what happens here, we breathe in the oxygen, don't we? And what does our body do? Cellular respiration. What do we breathe out? We breathe out carbon dioxide. All right? Carbon dioxide goes back again to the plant. Look what I said. If I use a different color, what did I do? I made a cycle, a continuous circle. All right? Ozone, oxygen also falls. Ozone, oxygen also dissolves in water. Right? There are fishes in the water. The fishes also respire. Where do they give off? Carbon <coughs> dioxide carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere, who takes it in, all right? The trees do. So when it comes to our nutrient cycles, a cycle, are you, are you okay? No, I'm I just heard water. Like no, I'm fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you had fallen off your chair or something. I'm fine. <laughs> a nutrient cycle means oxygen, I need oxygen. I, I can't, you know, once I can't make more, but we can't make more, all right? It is a non-living. It's not going to have a little oxygen, a little oxygen, all right? I'm going to meet and say, oh, let's make little baby oxygen. Okay, it's not going to work like that. We need to use it, and another process must then give it back again. Use, give back. Use, give back. It's a cycle. Okay, carbon. What do we need carbon for? All right, our most abundant form of carbon right, is in the form of carbon dioxide. Okay. Now, all of these arrows might look very, very difficult and, oh, I don't know what's going on. Right, we start off here. I have carbon dioxide <coughs> in the atmosphere. Okay. Now, what happens? Who uses the carbon dioxide? Let's start off at the point. We've got carbon dioxide. Who uses the carbon dioxide? Plants do for photosynthesis, okay? Now plants use the carbon dioxide. What do they use the carbon dioxide for? They use it to make food. Do plants 
eat, all right? Yes, they do, all right? Plants make food. What do they make? Carbohydrates, glucose, okay? Food, fats, proteins, all right? Those are all food. Fats here, you can think of olive oil, glucose, what do you think of? All your maize, your millies, proteins, your beans. Aren't those all plants? Yes. Then what happens? Plants get eaten by animals. Okay? What do plants and animals do? They break down this food and they, all living things, undergo respiration. What does cellular respiration do? It gives back carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Have a look. I'm going to use a different color again. Carbon dioxide, photosynthesis, eat by plants and animals. Plants and animals use respiration back again. Okay. But what happens here? Plants and animals die. And when they die, all right, they decay. They breaking down. All right, breaking down. What does breaking down do? It releases carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Or what will happen, especially to plants, they get crushed underneath the Earth's surface, all right, layers and layers of them. And what do we get? Plants, all right, crushed underneath are my fossil fuels. Coal, sorry, coal gas, right, all of those I can burn. Aha, what can I do? I can burn. When I burn them in my car driving here, my little exhaust pipe releases carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. What also happens? Volcanoes, when they erupt, what do they release? And you need to think about this when you do the history of life on Earth. They give off a lot of carbon dioxide. Where does the carbon dioxide go? Back into the atmosphere. So now I've got lots of carbon dioxide. Where does my cycle start again? Plants take it in. We use it. We give it back. Sha na na. Mine said it's time to take a break. Before we do, congratulations to Koena Sima. You have won yourself a Casio calculator from last week's Test Yourself competition. Mine said it's if you want to be like Koena, go to our Facebook page. The link is on our Facebook page for the Test Yourself competition, and you'll stand a chance to win this awesome Casio calculator. With that said, let's take a very quick break, and we'll see you straight after this. Welcome back, Mindset is from that break. Cheryl has just asked me to ask the questions that you guys have asked. So <laughs> now we're going to do the, the asking. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to ask now. <laughs> okay. So this one is from Bokamoso Sefoloshe. Wow. What is the living components of an ecosystem? What That's are it. the living okay. components? Producers, of mm -hmm. which are plants, mm -hmm. and then the consumers, which we usually call animals, and the decomposers, which are the bacteria and the fungi. Okay, and then there's another one here. Um, how does volcano? This is from Lerado okay. Makai. Right. How does the volcano release carbon dioxide? Okay, um, when a com when a volcano erupts, okay, and as I said, what we're going to do is we're going to link it back to what link it. When the, the end of the end of the fourth term, you're going to do the history of life on Earth. <coughs> and you're going to have a look at how the Earth was very different at one stage, where there were a lot of volcanoes. And when an, a volcano erupts, okay, all of you tend to think about the lava that flows out. But when a volcano erupts, the lava it's fuel, all right? And when it erupts, it releases carbon dioxide as a gas. Because remember, it's burning. Any kind of thing that burns is going to release carbon dioxide. So a volcano, when it erupts, it's the not so much the lava, right, that's a problem. It's actually that whole dust cloud with all of the carbon dioxide and the sulfuric gases. All right, and this one's from Bushle. Okay. And then 
she looks like a she. Does CO two come from the animals when they die? Because these animals yes. go. Mm? Yes. Wait. Right. Wait. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Got their energy <gasps> from the plants, and plants get their energy via the photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Actually, let me say, where does CO two come from? Okay. Any kind of when something dies, all right, the d decaying process, bacteria and fungi are going to break down the carcass. Bacteria and fungi are living. And any living thing, when it does work, what does it release? Carbon dioxide. Okay. Mm. Oh, okay, no, that's it. That's it. But something right. very random. Someone on Facebook is asking, where's Thomas? Where's <laughs> Thomas? Where's Thomas? <laughs> Do I know which one? And I then he no goes, please bring him back to our screen. So I think they're talking about Llewellyn. <laughs> oh, sorry. Llewellyn, Yomar, he's left. You are stuck with the rest of us. Thanks. Uh, once again, our self-confidence is broken. No, Thomas we love you. Thomas is not here, Thomas though. has <laughs> left the building. Thomas was never here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I, I got whispered in the ear. I need to do a few more quest a few questions for you, and then we'll go back to the other things. When it comes to questions on this section, all right, very often a uh, food chain can be asked because it shows all the different relationships. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, <coughs> when we get to food chains, as I said before, you very seldom, you guys always think of the land, the terrestrial ones. Here we have an aquatic, all right, ecosystem. Have a look. There's the energy from the sun, all right? And then the showing of the arrows, the arrow shows you, all right, the transfer of energy from one level to the next. Okay, so question, what term can be used to describe the diagram, all right? What diagram are we showing you? We are showing you a food chain, not a food web. All right, have a look at the arrows. The arrows are showing one specific food chain. Okay, question number two, identify the following. One, autotrophic, that is a producer. All right, so you go to your diagram and you look at the one organism that is able to use the sun's energy. The sun, there we go. What is this over here? This is algae. All right, algae are then my autotrophs because they are going to make the food. Oh, I've spelt it all wrong there. Okay, the next one, a secondary consumer. Secondary consumer is something that gets eaten by something <laughs> that sounds very, that, <laughs> that's a second animal in the line. All right, have a look. Here's my producer. All right, the first animal that eats the producer is my primary consumer. The next animal that eats my primary consumer is my secondary. This would then be tertiary, all right, and those would be quaternary. Quarter just keeps showing you going up and up. Primary is my mosquito. So what's my second consumer? All right. My second consumer is my dragon fly larvae because it eats my mosquitoes. Okay. Now over here, the herbivorous organism. A herbivorous organism eats plants. Now, though algae is not a plant, Herbivorous, it makes food. So a herbivore eats the green stuff that makes food. So what would be my herbivore? My herbivore is eating what the sun, the, the organisms that the sun was able to make from food, and that would have been my mosquito. All right, use your diagram. This, all the answers are in here. They're not asking you to use all any other sources of your information. Okay, question three. Explain why the amount of available energy decreases at each trophic level. Remember what I said to you. What happens at each level? 
all right? So it decreases means why does it go down? What happens at each level? Energy is lost. But it asks you, explain why. How is energy lost? Energy is lost through cellular respiration. All right? And the other two, I'm just going to go over here, defecation, feces, all right, and urine. So explain why the amount of available energy decreases. Energy is lost at each level because, all right, at the different trophic levels, respiration, defecation, urination occurs, which the animals, all right, or the consumers, they lose as energy. So at each level, energy <coughs> is lost. So if you want to go through over here, you can say the longer the food chain, the less energy is available here. This monarchy over here that's fishing, he's going to get very little energy. Because look, the mosquito, then the dragonfly, then the perch, then the pike, then him. All right? If he ate this fish over here, he would have had more energy than eating that one over there. Identify two abiotic factors from the diagram. Have a look. All right? Abiotic, non-living. The first one that is, should have been obvious to you was sunlight. And what kind of ecosystem are we in? Aquatic, so water would have been your other abiotic factor. Another one that you can't really see, but you know that's going to be, you could have said gases. Because what is dissolved in the water? Oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oh, going totally the wrong direction. Okay, let's come back to our challenge question. All right, let's have a look here. Oh, sure. Yes, James just <laughs> spoke me in the eye and just got a fright. Right, the it's food chain. In the eye. In the eye. Yes, I know. Mm. I was talking about okay, my eye and my heart. You fine, see, my brain fine. is kinetic. <laughs> yeah. The food chain that is represented by the pyramid of numbers below. So it must be one thing. One, all right. Gross, not an answer. Plankton, always lots. Gross, always lots. So that would lead, and I even gave the answer. My tree, one tree, many aphids. So if you don't know what an aphid is, right? It's those green little crawling bugs that you see on the tree. And what eat the aphids? My lady bugs. All right, is that, are we clear now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we finished? Yes. Thank okay. you, Ian. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> How's your brain feeling? Uh, or your body? Still dramatic? Uh, no, it's fine. Okay, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Mindset is at home. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, we're wishing you everything of your best, of the best, not of your best, of the best for your exam preparations and everything else in life. We love you. Hi, guys. <laughs>